Are lumens the best unit for measuring light in our industry? Or are they just another marketing strategy? Hi, and welcome back to Phoenix Focus. I'm your host, Katia, Product Manager at Phoenix Industries. So, what are lumens? No, really. What are lumens, and why are they the most commonly used unit of measurement for lighting products? There are certainly a lot of different ways to measure visible light out there, depending on the product and the application. And contrary to popular opinion, lumens aren't exactly the best measurement for the emergency warning market. Before we get into all that though, let's get a better understanding of how the human eye perceives light. Light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectrum begins with super long radio waves measuring the size of Mount Everest to super tiny gamma rays no larger than atomic nuclei. The section between infrared and ultraviolet light is known to us as visible light, which produces wavelengths 400 to 700 nanometers wide. Now, why can't we see waves smaller or larger than this? Well, my curious friend, that's a question for a higher power. Now that we understand what we can and can't see, let's learn a little more about a human eye sensitivity. Believe it or not, the human eye doesn't react the same to all colors on the spectrum. When looking at the visible light spectrum, you will notice that our eye is the most sensitive at about 550 nanometers, which we see as green light. Blue and red are the least sensitive to us because they fall at both ends of the spectrum. That's where lumens come in. When applying one watt of power to a blue and green LED, we will notice that the green is much brighter than the blue, even though they are consuming the same amount of power. Following a set of complex equations, we can then calculate a human eye's sensitivity to light and deduce a total measurement in lumens. The two other units of measuring light are known as lux and candelas. While lumens refer to the total amount of light resonating off a light source, lux is used to measure the amount of light on a defined surface. Candelas, on the other hand, calculate the total amount of candlelight at a given angular point. Now, these three units of measurement are used to describe the performance of a lighting product relative to its application, but there are some big differences. If you're selling bulbs designed to light up a full room, you'd represent a lumen rating since you're showcasing the total amount of light exiting the bulb. If you're selling stage lighting, then you promote your light performance in lux since the area you're lighting is well defined by the size of the stage. When an emergency vehicle is en route to a scene, the light bar's only focus is shining concentrated amounts of light at certain points to get a driver's attention. Because it's so critical that light hits the driver's eye, we would need to measure it in candelas to accurately calculate the amount of light at that given point. So, now that we know the differences, it seems a little odd that marketing advertisements for emergency light bars still show the lumen rating. What's more, a majority of them show just the raw lumen numbers, which don't take into account other factors that can actually decrease the light output. Those factors include the clarity of the lens, efficiency of the optics, the accuracy of the power regulator, and the thermal performance of the heatsink. When all of those limiters are factored in, you get the effective lumen rating. But most companies just take the lumen performance of the LED, multiply that by the total number of LEDs in the product, and publish that as accurate marketing material. <laughs> Here at Phoenix, we decided to run a little test. We ordered two different flashlights from two different manufacturers. Flashlight 1 advertised an output of 600 raw lumens, while Flashlight 2 advertised 500. After testing the total lumen output, we found that Flashlight 1 produced a total of 300 effective lumens, while Flashlight 2 produced 450. So, while a customer would think that Flashlight 1 is the better choice, Flashlight 2 is actually brighter. Ah, those pesky marketers. Luckily, we had the Society of Automotive Engineers, known as the SAE, watching the backs of emergency vehicle users. They regulate and test light performance strictly using candelas, as shown on test J595. They also do a great job rating the performance in different class levels from 1, 2, and 3. When looking at the test report of the Red Cobra 6 LED module, for example, you will notice that the head produces an output power of 1,645 candelas, which is five times the requirement of SAE Class 1, and 666 candelas at 20 degrees off axis, which is 22 times the same Class 1 requirement. As you can see, there isn't a lumen rating in sight, because it's not about the wasted light that shoots towards the sky or the ground. Again, it's about the light intensity at a given point in efforts to warn drivers considerable distances away. Now, you might be wondering, how many candelas do you have to produce to grab someone's attention way down the road? 
And at what distance can the human eye see visible light? Believe it or not, your eyes are capable of seeing one candela up to a distance of 30 miles in darkness. So if that's the case, could the 1,645 candelas of a Red Cobra T6 potentially be seen for 100 miles? Yes! But unfortunately, due to the Earth's curvature, the maximum distance you can see any object on the Earth is 3.1 miles. So, since we can see very little light easily at night, we design our products for optimum performance during daytime because that's the most difficult time to detect it. You know what that means? Yep, we're going against the sun, the brightest object in our solar system. And by bright, I mean 65 quintillion lumens kind of bright. Since the Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun and has a surface area of 98 million square miles facing the sun, we can calculate the total amount of light on the Earth to be 2.7 sextillion lux. That translates to 13,000 candelas at any given point on the planet. Even the Red Cobra T6's 1,645 candelas don't stand a chance to outshine that kind of light. What we're actually competing with is the 500 candelas of ambient sunlight bouncing off our roads, cars, buildings, and trees. In order to grab someone's attention at high speeds in the quickest time possible, you would need to double the power of the sun's reflective ambient light, as well as implement a calculated flash pattern in the light bar in order to make a significant impact on a driver. Successfully combining these two elements will clear the road and allow you to respond to the scene faster. Word to the wise, folks, if you're not buying Phoenix, make sure and do your research on those emergency lights before you hit the purchase button. And definitely don't rely only on lumen ratings. Thanks for watching this episode of Phoenix Focus. Still not convinced? Leave any questions or comments below. And you got an idea for a show? Let us know. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next time.